All right. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar, which is a part of our HAZMAT series entitled Ethanol Growth and Rail, brought to you by the Shortline Safety Institute. My name is Michelle Malski. I'm the Safety Programs Manager here with the Shortline Safety Institute, and I will be your guide during today's presentation. Before we begin, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank all of our participants for attending our webinar today. We hope that you will enjoy the educational presentation we have prepared. In case you'd like to watch this presentation again or share it with your team in the future, this presentation will be recorded and we will make that recording available to all participants following the conclusion of today's presentation on our website, which is www.shortlinesafety.org. Just click on the webinars tab on the home menu and select the webinar tab in the webinar that you wish to view. To ensure quality audio during this presentation, we have placed all attendees on mute at this time. You will only be able to hear our present presenter speaking. If you have any questions during the presentation, you may use the questions bar located on the lower right hand side of the webinar pop-up screen to type in your inquiries. We will dedicate time at the end of this presentation to read through all submitted questions and provide time at the end for our presenters to answer. If you have any questions after our presentations, please feel free to reach out to me or any of the presenters with their contact information that will be listed on the very last slide of this presentation. Now, for today's webinar, I'd like to introduce our panelists. First, we have Missy Ruff, who is our Technical Services Manager, and Kelly Davis, the Director of Regulatory Affairs with the Renewable Fuels Association. Our presenters are with us now and are here live. And so I will turn it over to them and have us, them get us kicked off. Ladies, the show is yours. <clears throat> thank you, Michelle, and thank you to the Shortline Safety Institute for the invitation to provide this overview of an industry that I've been proud to be part of for over 30 years. As, you, as she said, uh, my name is Kelly Davis. I'm the Director of Regulatory Affairs of the RFA. And with me today is my colleague, Missy Ruff. She's our Technical Service Manager. And she's here to discuss our award-winning ethanol emergency response training programs. <coughs> I'm trying to advance the slide. Uh, today's topics we're going to, this is the overview slide, we're going to review first some trends and growth of ethanol, the business and industry in general. We're going to review the commodity specifics about ethanol, and we're going to review our programs and resources that the RFA has available on ethanol safety and education. And then like Michelle says, we will have time for Q&A at the end. Uh, first, a little bit about the Renewable Fuels Association. The RFA is a national trade organization representing the ethanol industry. We have offices in D.C. and St. Louis. And since 1981, the RFA has been an authoritative voice of the U.S. ethanol industry. We have a diverse group of members, large and small businesses, publicly traded companies. We even have farmer-owned cooperatives. And our members are all committed to our mission, which is simple, which is to drive expanded demanded use for American-made renewable fuels and bioproducts worldwide. With the most experienced staff in the industry, the RFA is able to provide timely and comprehensive industry information to our members, to federal and state government agencies, to fuel marketers and retailers. We also have strategic partners and we also have contacts with the media. Importantly, we are a trusted source of scientific and te technical expertise as we drive ecologically sound and efficient and sound industry practices. The U.S. ethanol industry has undergone a dramatic expansion over the last four decades. Since 1980, the U.S. has used ethanol in its transportation fuel mix. Today, E10, which is 10% ethanol, 90% gasoline, is a common fuel found at most all retail stations across the nation. Our production capacity currently is over 15 billion gallons annually. We have over we have 213 installed production facilities and in 2016 American ethanol producers in response to unprecedented domestic usage and surging global demand churned out 15.3 billion gallons. One 
over 1 billion gallons of that were exported to over 50 countries, driven by global demand for greenhouse gas savings in the transportation sector, as well as one simple fact, that the U.S. ethanol is the world's lowest cost source for octane in fuels. Ethanol's octane value is 100. Our plants are generally located throughout the Midwest. We have over 200 plants operating in 29 states, and you can see this depicted on the map with blue dots. Of course, we're concentrated in the Corn Belt because we use field corn and sorghum as feedstock for first-generation facilities. We even have a few facilities under construction or expanding currently. Our industry currently supports 74,000 direct jobs and we have 265,000 indirect jobs across the country. i share with you a couple photos. Those of you that work in the Midwest have probably driven by and seen what's in those plants. And there's a nice picture of the inside of a laboratory of a, of a modern uh, fuel ethanol plant. So what does we do in those plants? Uh, a typical corn ethanol dry mill in the United States produces three key products from corn. Uh, we produce ethanol for fuel. We produce DDGS, which is an animal food, but we also produce corn distiller's oil, which is an animal food product, but it also can be used as a biodiesel plant feedstock. So logistically, a typical 100 million gallon a year ethanol plant, which you would see across the Midwest, uh, from a rail car perspective, would have to bring in about 17 rail cars a day of corn. So a typical annualized use of, uh, of corn by rail into an ethanol plant would be about 9,800 cars a year. But we estimate that corn travels uh, to our ethanol plants um, mostly by truck. We think that about 60% of the corn now traveling to the plants by rail. And what we do with that corn, we process it, and out the door, from a rail perspective, we need about 10 tank cars a day for a 100 million gallon plant, which is about 3,400 rail cars a year. And we need about 3,000 of those rail cars for DDG to be shipped out, and that's about nine hoppers a day. So that's the logistics of rail centering, uh, centering around a 100 million gallon facility. Current trends in the industry, uh, we have a U.S. renewable fuel standard, which requires that the production and use of incremental increases of renewable fuels each year. Uh, we have cellulistic uh, second generation ethanol facilities that are either operating or in startup throughout the Midwest. Currently, most all gasoline in the U.S. contains 10% uh, ethanol. EPA approved E15, a 15% blend of ethanol in 2011, and it is currently gaining market share. And we also have alternative fuels with higher blends that we call flex fuels that can contain ethanol up to 83% that are also gaining in popularity that uh, can be used in flexible fuel vehicles. And a shining light for our industry uh, currently is exports. And we have increased our, our global ethanol exports since 2009, and we're expected to be over a billion gallons a year uh, as well this year. Trying to advance, sorry. <laughs> just give us a second here. Mm -hmm. We have a little bit of an audio malfunction. We'll just be one moment. Are we good now? 
Yep, hear you loud and clear. Okay. Uh, we'll, um, let me... We're right at exports. Right, I'm trying to advance the slide. If you would like to, go for it. Um, so what we're here to talk about today is how we get our fuel ethanol uh, trans to market. Uh, today, uh, our producers are marketers. We use many modes of transportation. We load trucks. We transload from truck to rail. And we do the reverse from rail to truck. We have barges moving on the Mississippi, Ohio, Missouri, Illinois, and Columbia rivers. We use intercoastal barges and ocean-going tanker vessels for our exports. We even have some ethanol moving in pipelines. And of course, we use the railways as well. Most ethanol shipments originate by rail in the Midwest and move to the coast for distribution. We call this our virtual pipeline. Next slide. <laughs> it is estimated that 70% of ethanol travels to the marketplace by rail. Ethanol is transported using the standard DO2-111A rail car. It's a workhorse of the liquid transportation industry I'm sure you're most familiar with. On average, 85% of the current ethanol fleet is 10 years old or less. And the expected length of those 111A cars was expected to be 50 years. The entire 111A car is inspected for proper operating conditions before, during, and after every load. We ship about uh, 320 to 340,000 tank cars annually. And currently with the turns that we're experiencing, we're running a fleet somewhere between 29,000 and 31,000 cars annually. Due to efficiencies, we're seeing unit trains increasing. The unit trains are running from 75 cars to 110 cars, and we see increasing movements of unit trains in our business. We're continuously looking for improvements to the tank car design, loading and unloading actions, as well as employee education and knowledge about tank cars. RFA is now a voting member of the AAR Tank Car Committee. I've included a technical slide just for reference to, for, for you guys to understand that ethanol is a highly refined quality product that must meet a strict ASTM standard. It is a clear flammable liquid that fits under packing group two and it has a low vapor pressure, typically three PSI. This slide depicts our growth on rail by numbers of carloads annually. In 2006, we were the number two hazardous material shipped by rail. From 2007 to 2013, ethanol was the number one hazardous material on the rails. We have been steady eddy since then, but I've included also with this graph the crude oil growth on the rails as well for your observation. We lost our number one hazmat on rail position in 2013 to crude, but due to the recent slowdown in crude from the Bakken and the new pipeline capacities installed, I've been told that ethanol is likely to resume the number one hazardous material on the rail uh, position again. So as we picked up numbers on the cars moving on the rails, we also became the number one flagged commodity in the non-accidental release program. I've been told that you've, ex you've had a presentation on NARS or, or well experienced in any presentation on NARS probably taught you a lot about the placard alcohol NOS. We average uh, since uh, 2003, I've been keeping data and we're averaging about 60 to 80 NARS per year on these 340,000 shipments. We have routine specific causes for these for our cars. It's basically due to uh, loose manway bolts. Uh, we'll have manway gaskets that are deteriorated or misaligned, or sometimes they can even be missing. We have bottom outlet valves that can uh, jiggle loose. Uh, liquid lines and threaded valves can be loose, and the vacuum release uh, valve cap O-rings <clears throat> are also found to be deteriorated. So these were the most common 
uh, specific causes to the NARS. So we set out to decrease and eliminate NARS through awareness and education. So over the years from our programs, we have uh, decreased our NAR. And this is a NARI. This is a, an equalization of the NARS per thousand shipments. And you can see that alcohol's NOS tracks below uh, the other things that it, it, it actually runs against in the class three flammable work. We continue to work uh, if with the tank car committee to continue to get these down, these numbers down. So over the, <clears throat> over the years, as we brought these NARIs down, the way we did that is, is that safety is, is a priority for the ethanol industry, especially when it comes to ethanol transportation on the rail. RSA launched safety initiatives for transportation. We have a safety committee that's committed to this. Uh, we work with TransCare, and we're known to do industrial partnerships as well. The plant uh, and employee safety committee is extremely active, developing resources and best practices to keep the industry on the path to continuous improvement. There's a variety of resources the RFA has put together to serve as guidance documents to ensure the proper precautions are taken to avoid an incident involving ethanol on the rail. We have a variety of documents addressing rail best practices, placarding recommendations, and we have a release prevention document that was updated last year. We're currently uh, updating our best practices rail guide to make it follow through with some of the FRA's newest initiatives relative to the year of the owner and understanding how to better fleet manage. I expect for that uh, newest guideline to be able to be up on the internet uh, in June. To go after these NARS, the RFA partnered with rail industry experts and the Federal Railroad Administration to develop an engineering standard and, and, and disseminate this educational information about how to properly close the tank car manway. RFA published guidelines for hinged and bolt manway assembly. The document <clears throat> provides industry personnel with procedures and standards for the inspection, maintenance, and securement of these manways to ensure a leak-free performance. The renewable fuels industry is looking to reduce the number of product releases as a result of the failures of the assembly of these uh, manway bolted joints and the threaded connections on the tank cars. We also developed a condensed version uh, or a poster and brochure uh, for this, you know, how to properly close a, a manway. And we have found these are great on-site teaching tools. You'll find these when you go to the loadout shack, so uh, where ethanol is being loaded. Uh, they're a nice reminder on the wall uh, for them as a nice teaching tool. Now I'd like to turn over the portion of the presentation to Missy. Uh, she has been instrumental in development and implementation of our award-winning emergency response program. Missy? Thank you, Kelly. And I want to thank Michelle for having us today and um, all of you guys for tuning in. Um, trying to advance. Oh, there we go. Ethanol represents about 20% of the total hazmat shipments and is the number two hazardous material shipped by rail today, possibly back to number one. It is important that emergency response community Throughout the country is well prepared and trained for ethanol and ethanol blended fuel related emergencies. So in 2006, the RFA along with partners established the Ethanol Emergency Response Coalition known as the EERC. The EERC um, developed the safety and emergency response information for the first responder community, specifically the training guide to ethanol emergency response training program. This training program is a tool for emergency responders to improve their knowledge and ability to respond to emergencies involving ethanol and ethanol blended fuels. It is a scientifically based body of information regarding effective fire and spill control methods involving all aspects of ethanol and ethanol blended fuels. It is an evaluation of firefighting and spill suppression foams, equipment, tactical and strategic considerations. The training program is a combination of educational materials, training programs, and other 
product for emergency responders. RFA supports the ethanolresponse.com website as a one-stop shop of all ethanol safety and emergency information. RFA just completed the newly updated 2017 version of the Training Guide to Ethanol Emergency Response. The materials are currently at the press. Um, the updated program has been approved by the American Chemical Council and is now part of the TransCare National Training um, Tour, just like the anhydrous ammonia and the chlorine program. The classroom portion is available on both DVD and downloadable online at ethanolresponse.com. The ethanol safety program consists of eight modules. Each module has PowerPoint presentation embedded with instructor notes, an instructor manual, and participant guide. The training modules cover an introduction to ethanol, ethanol and ethanol blended fuels, chemical and physical characteristics of ethanol and hydrocarbon fuels, transportation and transfer, storage and dispensing locations, and firefighting foam principles, um, general health and safety considerations, and storage and pre-planning considerations. There are videos to go along with each of those training modules. Um, the first is the ethanol response consideration video, which is to be used in conjunction with the training modules. The next video is responding to ethanol incidents. This is a 20-minute video, provides the information first responders and firefighters in particular will need if they are called to an ethanol incident. Um, also included on this training program in the DVD um, is an extras folder. And in that extras folder, um, you can find customizable um, posters, brochures, and a press release for if you have a training event. Um, there's a brand new Rail Tank Car 101 PowerPoint and a Rail Tank Car 101 video um, that we just filmed this fall. Um, the 2016 U.S. DOT Emergency Response Guidebook. Um, there's some information from TransCare and Chemtrek. The DOT Chart 15, um, AAR's Pamphlet 34, AAR's Loading and Unloading Video, and then um, RFA also included uh, just what Kelly had showed you, the uh, guidelines for release, or sorry, the hinged and bolted manway assembly um, and how to properly close a tank car manway poster and brochure. Um, the RFA's guidelines for release prevention and impact mitigation is also on there, along with DOT's cargo tank motor vehicle loading and unloading operations. Um, uh, trailer um, climbing training PowerPoint, and then the new 2017 um, field guide for tank cars that AAR just put out. RFA is a national sponsor of TransCare, which stands for Transportation Community and Emergency Response, and is a voluntary national outreach effort that focuses on assisting communities to prepare for and to respond to possible hazardous material transportation incidents. The RFA has been a re recipient of the National TransCare Achievement Award consecutively from 2012 to 2016. RFA staff members have also been recognized as well through individual achievement awards for their efforts. These awards are given to those in recognition for extraordinary achievements in support of TransCare initiatives and extending that support beyond one geographic region. The RFA and TransCare have been awarded several grants over the years from the FRA to hold ethanol safety seminars across the country in conjunction with Shortline Railroads. The goal of these seminars was for attendees to gain full ethanol emergency response training experience that they can put to use immediately in the field as well as pass along to other emergency responders. The ethanol safety seminar training is for the emergency response community, both public and private, emergency management agencies and others at local, state, and federal levels to improve and maintain their knowledge and expertise regarding the planning preparedness, mitigation, and recovery with regard to ethanol and ethanol blended fuel emergencies. 
ethanol safety seminars are instructed by a national accredited and professional instructor with an extensive background in emergency management, firefighting, and hazardous material response. The classroom methodology chosen does not um, rely solely on the distribution of the DVD, rather it allows for interaction and information exchange between the communities present, the instructor, and individual and industry personnel. <clears throat> the goal of these seminars is for attendees to gain full ethanol and ethanol blended fuel emergency response training experience that they can put to use immediately in the field. These safety seminars are free to attend. Um, two sessions per day are typically how we hold them, um, and that's to accommodate the volunteers in the area and those uh, on different shifts. These ethanol safety seminars are a great opportunity for emergency responders, fire departments, LEPCs, and other interested parties in the community. Since December 2010, RFA has conducted 199 ethanol safety seminars spanning over 35 states, and we have trained over 6,000 emergency responders. The, renew the RFA, um, in partnering with the International Association of Fire Chiefs, developed a training program called Train the Trainer, which is aimed at industry pulling together emergency response and ethanol expertise. This, this program is based on the training guide to ethanol emergency response training program. The uh, Train the Trainer is a pay it forward type of program. A single webinar can train a group of individuals who can then turn around and pass that information forward, equipping entire communities with the knowledge necessary to respond to any potential ethanol related emergency. The train the trainer courses are offered both in seminar and webinar format and are intended to develop instructors to lead operation level training. These are responders who have an awareness level of hazardous material storage, handling, and emergency response. The learning objective established are relative relevant objectives that the instructor must understand. The seminar and webinars are open to all professional individuals above the technical level of training who are interested in learning how to teach ethanol emergency response, but are tailored towards ethanol production facility employees, ethanol safety professionals, professionals, railroad safety professionals, emergency responders, firefighters, police officers, and emergency management professionals. RFA has held 10 of these training sessions and has trained over a thousand trainers since December 2014. The seminars and webinars are instructed by professional hazard, hazmat trainer who instructs individuals how to train others in ethanol emergency response tactics and procedures. At the completion of the seminar and webinar, certificates of participation are awarded to all participants. Under an alert grant in participation with the IFC, the RFA developed a two-hour interactive online training program, which covered the eight modules from the Training Guide to Ethanol Emergency Response. The training program was launched in August 2016, and from our latest report in March of this year, um, 2000, or, sorry, 270 participants have completed this training. The training is offered for free and is open for anyone interested. Participants can take the course at their own pace. Once participants complete all eight modules in the training program, they are awarded a certificate of participation. And to register um, for this online course, um, there's the bit.ly link um, to get there. And this slide shows the steps to planning a seminar. First. Um, you locate a financial sponsor such as a railroad, a lo local emergency planning commission, um, a hazardous material emergency preparedness grant uh, funding, FRA grant funding, et cetera. Uh, next, you locate a venue that has between 50 and 100 feet. Uh, we try to locate free venues um, because uh, that just takes away from that. We just have to get more money um, to cover those costs at the venue charges. Um, we arrange dates with the instructor, sponsor, and venue. We contact the authority having jurisdiction in the state for CEU or credit, qualifi credit, credit qualifications. Um, 
we create a flyer and an agenda with the sponsor's logo, and then we set up registration at rfa.traincaster.com. After that, um, post seminar. We post the seminars on the websites and promote them. Um, we create a press release with a sponsor's quote, and most importantly, we place a food order for the class, um, which is usually covered by an industry sponsor. On, sorry, I jumped ahead of slides. On the day of the seminar, the sponsors give um, a 15 to 20 minute presentation on their company and their safety objectives. After that, the instructor will take over and present the training guide to ethanol emergency response modules with PowerPoints and videos. At the end of the class, evaluations are collected and certificates are handed out to all attendees. Um, here are some of the upcoming ethanol safety training. Um, you can register online for the ethanol um, training course at any time at bit.ly um, backslash ethanol response and take the course at your own convenience. Um, RFA has two train the trainer um, ethanol emergency response webinars coming up. Um, our next one is coming up is June 14th and we have another one coming up in August. And those are both two hour webinars um, from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Central Time. And if you're interested in taking that course, um, you can register at rfa.screencaster.com. And um, we also have some uh, actual seminars. Um, those are typically five hours. Um, we'll, we'll, in June, we're going to be in Utah. In July, we're going to be in Virginia and then Florida. And then we'll be in Colorado. The end of July. Um, in August, we're going to be back in Florida for several more trainings, and then we're going to be in Wyoming. Um, if you happen to be in any of those locations, those cities, and interested in taking the training course, um, you can always reach out to me or you can register um, at the registration website, the rfa.traincaster.com. Um, and Feel free to contact me at any time if you guys have any questions. But um, right now, I'm going to kick it back to Kelly. Thanks, <clears throat> Thanks Missy. Uh, before closing, we did want to acknowledge HM251. HM251 is the final rule published May 1st, 2015. It's the Enhanced Tank Car Standards and Operational Controls for Highly uh, Hazardous Flammable Trains. The rule requires upgrades to the current tank cars in use with compliance uh, prioritization of crude oil, followed by ethanol, and then followed by the remaining flammable cars. Uh, moves of ethanol uh, by retrofitting the DO2 111s or buying a new DO2 117 car outright have a compliance deadline of May 1st, 2023 for ethanol cars. This is a nice schematic of, of the, the DOT uh, 117 car. Uh, the, the final rule was also in conjunction with Transport Canada. And, uh, you know, these cars uh, are being turned over now. And uh, even though our cars are 10 years old and were built for 50 years, our industry will be in compliance with this rule by 2023 and either be in new cars or retrofitted cars. The schematic on the new 117, uh, it, this is here to show you kind of how it's been beefed up. It has a thicker 9 16th inch uh, uh, tank shell and the actual shell has steel improvements as well. It has an 11 gauge jacket with thermal protection, that's the fiber frack that's between the, uh, the, the two shells. Uh, and it has a half an inch full height head shields. And it also has a pro improved high capacity pressure relief valves. And it also has this breakaway bottom outlet valve as well as top fitting protections. So the existing tank cars must be retrofitted with these same components here. This is a page that has our RFA uh, resources. You're welcome to call uh, RFA Daytime and talk to Missy uh, or myself and with any questions. 
Safety is a priority of the ethanol industry, especially when it comes to ethanol transportation on the rail. We have a variety of sources we put together that we're willing to share. Uh, they help you with taking proper precautions to help avoid an accident. And then if you, if you do have an accident, we also have some mitigation guides as well. RFA will continue to stay active, developing resources and best practices to keep the industry on the path to continuous improvement. And Missy and I both thank you for listening. All righty. That will conclude our presentation part of today's presentation. I would like to thank Ms. Ruff and Ms. Davis for that great presentation we, we just had. And uh, at this point in time, we'd like to begin the question and answer portions for today's presentation. Uh, so I'll give it a couple minutes if you want to fill in some questions on the tab bar over on your right hand, right hand side. You can do so at this time. All right, I'll give it a few minutes here until we get some more uh, questions coming coming through. But I do have one here that's a, a pretty common question. Uh, will this PowerPoint me, be made available? And I can take the answer to that one. Um, yes, this webinar is not only recorded, uh, but it will also be available in a PDF version on the SLSI website. So if you or a part of your team wasn't able to make today's adventure, then you can come to our website and either watch the full recording or download the PDF and review it at your own, your own pace. All right, I'll just give it one more question time or one more minute here for some questions to filter through. All right, I do have one question that came through um, for the ladies. Uh, the question here reads, do you see an expansion in the ethanol markets in the coming years? I'm guessing they're looking for a projection on the, on your side. Um, we should if the renewable fuel standard is, is uh, continued forward. You can tell by our graph we've been pretty steady over the last of five years because we, we reached our growth. Corn ethanol is capped by the renewable fuel standard at 15 billion gallons, which is where we are. Uh, so the cellulistic ethanol and advanced biofuels uh, should be able to grow under the current RFS. But the political climate is, your guess is as good as ours. All right, and we have another question that just came in. Um, can I sign up for the train the trainer at www.rfa.traincaster.com? Is that is that correct? Is that the right website? Yes. Alrighty. Good question. All right. Well, that's the only uh, questions that we have here today. So uh, I will. Uh, conclude our, our journey here today. So that covers all of our questions. Um, and, you know, if you think of any additional questions or issues that you'd like to discuss directly either with our presenters here today, uh, you can either contact them at their information listed here on the screen or you can contact us right here at the Shoreline Safety Institute as well. Uh, the information that was available today here we'll make available on our website. If you'd like to provide any feedback or suggest any future topics, please feel free to contact me or Sabrina Weiss. Our contact information is both listed there on the last screen. Um, and so the last thing I'll, I'll end with uh, is, you know, make it a safe day today, tomorrow, and, and in your near future. And uh, stay tuned with us for more information on our next webinar, which will be in July. And we have some really hot topics coming up as well, um, as, uh, including topics such as hazmat storage uh, and some risks and hazards with um, high and wide moves. So stay tuned for more. And uh, thank you so much for joining us. And don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Make it a safe day. Thank you, folks. Thank you, guys. Thank you.